Poems that have to rhyme, James. Come on. Yeah, I know, but I never understood that at school. Yeah, because <laughs> like the world doesn't rhyme inherently, does it? He's, I mean, he's got us with that one. I, I don't think there's coming back from that. The world doesn't rhyme, James. So you talked about being at school and writing a poem. Is that how you got into it? Like, what do, what do you think made you want to go down this road? Because it isn't that mainstream, but I feel like you are bringing it mainstream. That is very high praise indeed. I, I, I hope to... <laughs> I hope to make it more mainstream than it was when I found it, because... Um, uh, for for most of my life, it's been relatively niche, um, and also also I think it's it's like it's like someone saying I do music, like that can mean so many things. You can do music, and you can be like a, a classical cellist, or you can be heavy metal electric guitarist, and you both do music, but it's not <laughs> the same thing, and the same audience wouldn't listen to both things necessarily. So like when I when I say I, I'm a poet or I write poems, you know, I know what's coming. I know that there's the eye roll and the, you know, the thought flashes across the brain. Why me? Why have I ended up in a conversation with someone who's probably going to bear their soul? Um, and all I'm, all, I'm, all I'm really trying to do is I loved, when I was in school, I loved stand-up comedy and rap you know, people who rapped, because people who rapped, I just thought, were ingenious with, not everyone, but a few people were ingenious with uh, the way they used words. And stand-up comedy, I just think stand-up comics are the most honest, <laughs> honest people in our society by a mile. And it's an acceptable place for such observational honesty. You know, I've never quite had the courage required to do uh, stand-up comedy traditionally and I've never um, felt like I have the right persona to try and be a rapper so I, I decided, I decided I, well you know <laughs> sorry for uh, <laughs> sorry for breaking that one live but um, yeah I decided to try and um, you know smash the two things together and do do a, a form of poetry that you wouldn't necessarily find in a textbook, but you know, you might enjoy of an evening. Right, I've got this poem from Dan. It's called The Art Gallery. Um, I imagine this was released a good 20 years ago. It's from Daniel Hudson, aged 10. Walking silently down polished grey aisles, beautiful flowers arranged neatly in elegant pots, passing by thousands of canvases carefully observing each one. Every thought disappears, all eyes are glued to a portrait. Traveling through history, that is what I'm doing. I look at sunflowers and I try to imagine how Van Gogh must have felt when he painted this masterpiece, using layers of brush strokes to produce one of the most famous pictures of all. I turn away from the troubled genius. Wow, the fact that you knew that, that's good. Well, I was very ahead of my time, James. I turn away from the troubled genius and slowly retreat into reality. As I walk down the aisles, questions are burning inside my head. Questions I would love to ask people if only they were alive. <laughs> wow, that is so dark. <laughs> okay, over to Tom Foolery. Oh, man, <laughs> dude. Deep, deep. Ten year old? Ten years old? Yeah, yeah. You were, you were really, um, you were thinking about some, some pretty, some pretty big things, man. I, I think it's so cool that you, that you, um, you know, sat down to, to write that. I don't know if you. Were <laughs> don't <talking>. stop. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't mean, know if it was a school project or something, but. I, <laughs> man. <laughs> Dan looks so embarrassed right now. Can I just say though, I Dan, thought... Dan by fate praise there. <laughs> <laughs> did you not hear the sincerity in my voice? <laughs> so good that you did that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't. Th I don't. By the way, I don't think it's good. Like, I'm not like. <laughs> I mean, I think it's all right. I don't know poetry though. I th I was surprised that none of it rhymed. Though. Poems that have to rhyme, James. Come on. Yeah, I know, but I never understood that at school. <laughs> yeah, because like the world doesn't rhyme inherently, does it? He's. I mean, he, he's got us with that one. I, I, I don't think there's coming back from that. The world doesn't rhyme, James. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I like. I like. I'm going to throw this out there. I like to make mine rhyme simply because simply because there's not much about the. Basically, what you had 
but poem a poem is made up of many aspects i guess and what you had there was the kind of the the deep philosophical thought thing that that really often appears in poems and to be honest is how most people tell a poem because my my poems are so undeep um and uh you know very often lacking the the profoundness you know that you were able to get i think mine have to rhyme otherwise they they don't sound like poems at all they sound like you're like the like, britney of poetry is that what yeah <laughs> they sound like speeches um you know like so yeah well, i, I chuck, chuck a few rhymes in mine you say that though but your your poem that came out during the start of this pandemic was incredibly deep and really moving for so many people i was just fishing i just wanted one of you to <laughs> jump in and and <laughs> tell me you know the, the the affirmation that i sought so you use the website do you ever use the website rhymezone.com all the time no no, no. legit I have an open tab of Rhyme Zone right now. You need Rhyme Zone. Seriously? Really? Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. I, will, I will go up on any <laughs> stage and admit that sometimes, you know, you, you've written a line and in order for it to be complete, you've got to think, all right, what, what's a pairing sounding word? And I mean, Rhyme Zone doesn't do the whole job for you. It'll give you a list of words and you've got to, you've got to formulate the next bit of story to get to that one. But fully, like, I use Rhyme Zone all the time. Rhyme Zone's a bit like Viagra for a poet, you know? It's like, you wish you didn't have to need it, but maybe you need it, you know? <laughs> just, you I can see a out. career in stand-up comedy for you as well. I can, I can feel that. I think you should do it. Um, well, so you've written a brand new poem called Never Have I Ever. Can you tell us about this, this poem? It was Pride Month, and I thought that I'd really like to write something for, for Pride Month. Um, because, uh, as I alluded to before, most of my closest friends are from my time working in the um, in the theatre industry, and um, and I'm, I'm you know I'm going frequently with them to um, to Pride each year, and and I, I thought it would be nice to write something for that, but <laughs> you know um, I wrote I wrote something, and I and I didn't I didn't actually think that I was doing anything particularly. Uh, interesting or revelatory and I think if, if ever you feel that way you know you shouldn't just put something out just to contribute to the noise that is the internet like you know contribute if you if you've got something that you think is worth someone else listening to um, and then I and then uh, manager Alex um, asked me to watch Disclosure which is a documentary um, wow. which I watched and I, that blew me away. I was like, wow, you know, wow. And then I rewatched Paris is Burning um, and I was like, okay, oof. like I can really uh, do something, um, you know, better than I did. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not even sure I have, but it made me miss Pride Month because, um, you know, because I was watching things that were actually making me think and that made me, and then, and then also the the Black Lives Matter movement was going on, and it got me thinking a lot as well about, um, you know, your place in the world as a straight white male, and whether actually you should weigh in on these conversations, or whether maybe it's time, maybe it's time you should just <laughs> shut up for a little bit and, and have a listen. Um, and so I was thinking about all those things, and then um, uh, I, I I ended up. Um, writing this uh, this poem, which I haven't I haven't released myself on my channels yet, so I'm gonna, um, you know, it'll it'll be in this in this podcast. Amazing. Um, it is important though for allies and non-gays like you and Dan to kind of speak out for people because if we make all the noise, then we just look like. Well, this a this this right? informed this is informing um uh my my thinking at the moment because there's there's two very valid schools of thought one of them is you know um it's time to listen and not necessarily imagine that you know everything and that's very valid <laughs> you know that's super valid the other thing though that's working at the same time is if only the people who are affected by an injustice are talking about that injustice it becomes an echo chamber and nothing gets done exactly. um, so both of those things kind of have to work at the same time. So what I've taken from that is don't just, you know, try, try not to spout knowingly 
ill-educated views, <laughs> try and try and read something or watch something. And then maybe, you know, if you think you can be helpful, be helpful. Listening to your poem as we're about to do, like if we were actually playing Never Have I Ever, I would be wasted by the end of it, <laughs> all of the stuff that you're going on about. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, when, I was trying to, when I was trying to think of what to write, I was, I was thinking very consciously about how you approach um, a topic that, how you, how you approach an injustice necessarily that you don't have to live through, but you're aware of, and you don't go at that the same way. You don't go, you, it, it would be, I just think it would be super inappropriate to, to be like, it's just horrible that this is happening because it's actually like, how do you even know? You know, no one's persecuting you for your, for your identity and your sexuality, your beliefs. You don't have to have those uncomfortable conversations with your parents where they sometimes result in, you know, the, the breakup of, you know, a relationship and you don't have to do that. So actually don't get on a soapbox and be like, this is, this is really hard because you don't know. So how do you approach a problem that you're aware of that you don't know about? And, um, I was thinking about how to write poems that could be more relevant to the kind of people that I'd want to hear this message because, you know, no, no offense to people of different generations, but, you know, by the time you're 80, you know, often you're really enshrined in your ways and your belief system. And it's like, I would rather put my energy and attention into trying to capture the thoughts of an 18 year old who can still do a whole lot of damage in their lifetime if they go around living intolerantly. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I use never have I ever because it's a game that 18 year olds play. And, um, you know, I, ju I just thought what would happen if you were playing that game and then you just decided to inject a dose of realness. <laughs> you just went <laughs> off on one about, you know, the things you've never had to deal with that yeah. load of people have had to deal with. So, All right. Well, it's the world premiere then of Never Have I Ever by Tom Foolery on a gay and a non-gay. Have you ever played Never Have I Ever? It's a special sort of game. It's often pulled out at parties and the claims are all the same. You find out who's in the Mile High Club or who's done something gross. Well, I want to play that game with you now, but I've got slightly different boasts. Never have I ever been made to feel guilty for who I love. Never have I had to hide my sexuality like a secret to be ashamed of. Never have I been being myself and been told, you probably should tone it down. Never have I had to plead my case to be referred to by a preferred pronoun. Never have I felt like I don't belong in my own skin and had folks who haven't met me making sure that I can't win. Never have I had to live with a constant threat of violence because I wanted to celebrate my difference and for that you must be tireless. Never have I ever been subjected to stop and search, and when I'm out, if I see police, I never think that I'll get hurt. Never have I ever been worried when walking home alone at night or had keys between my fingers like I'm ready for that fight. Never have I been forced to see myself in films that make it seem like the characteristics that define me make me a menace to the screen. Never have I extended a hand of friendship and been met by a fierce fist. Never have I had laws passed that pretend I don't exist. All these things should be universal, so it's a bitter pill to swallow when you know how few can say them too, so my claims start feeling hollow. Never have I ever been so saddened that it's the case that these claims are the preserve of straight white men and not all the human race. And look, so if perchance I have offended... Think but this, and all is mended. This poem celebrates our differences. So, if you're in doubt, thanks for stopping by. But close the door on your way out.